This is Math 98, Section 9.1, and we're going to um, start dealing with radicals. So we're going to simplify some square roots in this section. And before, before we do too much of that, I want to make a couple of distinctions here. So the first one are, are between these three things. So 3 squared. So when I'm squaring something, I'm multiplying it by itself, right? This is how many of these bases you have multiplied by each, by them, by each other. 3 times 3 is 9. So notice this one is negative 3 squared. So this is negative 3 times negative 3. Um, a negative times a negative is positive, so this is also 9. Now this one, though, negative 3 squared. This is telling you to square the 3 and then negate that. This is the same as writing this. So 3 squared is 9, and then it's negated. So this one is negative 9. Oh, I made a really big, neg big negative. Negative 9 is what that one is. So there's a distinction. So thinking about that then, uh, I also want to think about the difference between um, this, this, and this. So square rooting um, feels like it kind of undoes uh, squaring. So square root of 25, what times itself is 25? 5. And notice we're just looking, we just get a positive answer here. Whoops, I wrote this one wrong. That, that's the same as that. I want to make that different. There we go. That's what I meant to write. So this is negative square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5, but then we negate it. So that's negative 5. And then this one, square root of negative 25. It's saying what number times itself would give me a negative 25. And this one, there, there is a solution for it. It's actually called an imaginary solution. But we, just, we can just say no real solution. Without knowing about um, imaginary numbers, we say this has no solution. All right, so those are out of our way. So 7 squared, we know that that is 49. Negative 7 squared. We know that that is also 49. But the square root of 49 only gives us positive 7. So it, this doesn't entirely undo squaring. It only does it in the positive direction. It won't give us negative answers. We have to put a negative out here if we want there to be a negative. Just a little bit of vocabulary. This, uh, this symbol right here is called the, the radical. It's the radical symbol or sign. And then the thing that's being radicaled is called the radicand. I will never ask you to reproduce that on a test. But that's just so you can see the vocabulary, uh, the radicand. And then 7 is the answer. So it, with the squaring, it's good to know your squares at, e at least up to 12. So know that 1 squared is... 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, etc., all the way up to 12 squared uh, being 144. Now, in your calculator, you can do a lot of these, right? Like you can say, what is 7, what is 7 squared? And it'll tell you 49. Or what is the square root of 49? And it'll tell you that it's 7. But uh, familiarity with being able to how to manipulate these uh, is also I want, I want to transcend just using the calculator. I want to understand what, what we're doing. So let's talk about a couple of these. Square root of 36. Uh, what times itself is 36? Well, it's 6. And again, that's one to know. You should know that. Square root of 225. You might know it. You might not. Um, I think it's 15. This ends in a 5. Like 15 feels good. Let me check this one on my calculator just to make sure. So square root of 225. Yep, spits out a 15. Negative square root of 169. So this, the answer is going to be negative because it's negative here. Square root of 169, pretty sure that's 13. Just going to check on my calculator. Yeah, I feel good about that. So that's negative 13. And now this one, square root of a negative, it's asking me to find square root of a negative. I'm going to say no real answer or no real number. You could say no solution for now. There is a solution. It's an imaginary number, but we'll, uh, we'll get to those in later courses, maybe in this one. Uh, next thing I'd like to do is point out the difference between these two statements. They look a lot alike, but there's different things going on here. Uh, notice in this first one, it's square root of 9, 
plus square root of 16. So this is seeing square root these separately and then add those answers together. So this would be the same as uh, 3 plus 4, which is 7. And this bottom one, notice this is saying square root of 9 plus 16. So that's telling us to do that addition first, 9 plus 16, which is 25, and then take the square root of that, which is 5. You can see these are different things. This square root doesn't uh, distribute across the addition. Um, so these are very different things. Make sure you're keeping them uh, separate in your mind. Let's think about like square root of 6 or maybe the square root of 65. Now, it's nice to have an approximation of what these are equal to about, or at least what two whole numbers they're between. So if I think about 6, well, 2 squared, whoops, 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. And notice that 6 is between those two things. Not square root of 6, but 6 itself is between those two things. So what that means is a uh, square root of 6 must be between the square root of 9 and the square root of 4. And square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So square root of 6 must be 2 point something, right? It's between 2 and 3. Let me see if I, my thinking works. Square root of 6? Yeah, it's 2 point something. So it's nice to be able to have a sense of that. Like think about 65, square root of 65. 65, well, let's see, uh, 8 squared is 64, and 9 squared is 81. So this square root of 65 should be 8 point something. Pretty close to 8, 8.06. Yeah. Good. So I can think about what two whole numbers the square roots are between. The square root of x squared, well, it's x. How about the square root of x to the sixth power? Now, that's a little more interesting to me. In other words, like this is asking what squared gives me x to the sixth. Well, I know that, that multiplying with exponents, like if I have, um, I don't know, a to the 5th times a to the 5th, that's a to the 10th, right? Like if I'm multiplying, ex uh, multiplying with exponents, I'm adding the exponents together. There's five of them total. So if I think about this, I want something that'll give me 6. It's got to be x cubed, right? x cubed times x cubed is x to the 6th. So the square root of x to the 6th is x cubed. Notice what I'm doing is I'm cutting the exponent in half. When I'm taking it, uh, when I'm taking the square root of it. Great. So square root, say, of uh, a to the fiftieth must be a to the twenty-fifth. Right? You're cutting it in half. So that helps us think about a couple other simplifications that we could do. Well, one of the nice things about square roots is when there's multiplication in there, we can break it up into two pieces. Or we could just think of this as like one thing, 25x squared. Well, what's the square root of 25? It's 5. What's the square root of x squared? It's x. Right? In other words, if I say 5x squared, that will give me that 25x squared back. Let's think about this one the same way. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of y to the 8th is y to the fourth. Square root of b to the 20th, b to the 10th. Just think pieces here. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of m to the 12th is m to the 6th. Similarly here, square root of 100 is 10. Square root of x to the 4th is x squared. Square root of y to the 6th, again, we're just cutting them in half, y to the 3rd. So let me go back to something that I said earlier, because it's easy to get these um, a little confused. I said how like that is not equal to that. So I'm going to write this a little abstractly. I'm going to say uh, the square root of a plus the square root of b does not equal the square root of a plus b. But the square root of a times the square root of b does equal the square root of a times b. 
one way to think about this is um, addition, you know, it's kind of the simplest way we can combine things. And if you do repeated addition, you know, like 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, you could do that by multiplying, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them multiply together. So this is multiplying. And if I do repeated multiplication, times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3, that is like exponents. So what's going on here is this is too big of a jump. Uh, exponents and radicals undo each other, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. This is too big of a jump, so that won't distribute across there. But when they're adjacent, that will distribute across there. So um, radicals distribute across multiplication, just like multiplication distributes across addition. Like you've been doing stuff like that for a long time. Uh, 3 times x plus 4. Four. Notice this is multiplication and this is addition. They're adjacent to each other, so this distributes across that. You could write that as 3x plus 12. So be careful. Keep those separate in your mind. That's a really common error that I see. All right. Hey, uh, give the practice problems a try. If you have any questions, please message me or uh, post stuff in the forum.